The samples from chemical weapons sites are brought to this lab. The transport container is made to withstand a plane crash. The scientists use detectors while opening it to make sure they're not exposed to nerve agents. Dr. Hugh Gregg is the head of OPCW's lab. The final container is the sample itself, the samples that were collected in the field. We ensure that those seals are absolutely correct and that they haven't been tampered with, and then we're ready for that sample. Samples are analyzed in a gas chromatograph mass spectrometer, or GCMS, a device that breaks the samples down into its components and then identifies the chemical agents. The routine GCMS analysis that we would do for environmental samples can see things down um, below a part per million. They can see samples that, that have been there for uh, weeks or months. Under the threat of U.S. strikes and with Russian diplomatic pressure, Bashar al-Assad has agreed in principle to put Syria's chemical weapons under international control. The OPCW would most likely take the lead, cataloging and monitoring the stockpiles. The organization has done it in other countries and knows how long it takes. For our inspectors to catalog that, they would actually have to go and, and witness how many artillery shells, how much would, would they contain on an average fill. They would have to you know, look at storage containers. They would have to figure all that out. So cataloging um, something would depend on how many sites there are, how many different munitions there are. You know, it could take months. Fred Plake in CNN, the Netherlands.